Today I am here to discuss on the topic role of cell adhesion molecule gap junction extracellular matrix in cell signaling. The first important molecule of cell adhesion molecule is called as catherine. From the name itself it is denoting calcium dependent adhesion molecule is called as catherine. This is a transmembrane structural protein. For every cell to cell interaction catherine molecules are very important so that the two cells can be communicate together. This molecule is having two component extracellular unit and intracellular unit. What is extracellular unit? It is something found outside the cell. Intracellular component which is seen inside to the cells. So this intracellular unit will be binding to that of the actin filament which is a cytoskeleton which is located inside the cell. And for every extracellular unit for the joining, calcium ion or the Ca2 plus ions is always required. So that from this figure it is understood that this component is called as intracellular component and this is extracellular unit which has been denoted. So from this again from this figure it is understood the calcium extracellular components will be joining with that of the Ca2 plus ion. And something that is located in intracellular components have been denoted over here with alpha, beta and P120 something that has been given. I will explain in the next slide. So for interaction with the actin required proteins like beta catenin, alpha catenin and vinculin. This is called as alpha catenin and beta catenin. So this intracellular component of the catenin required first association with that of the beta catenin and then further to that of the alpha catenin from this figure also i have been given this is this is a actually a extracellular component which is giving a very close association with the help of the ca2 plus ions and then intracellularly you can see uh, some of the important actin filaments which is which can be connected with the help of alpha beta catenin as well as vinculin there are one component called as vinculin also and what are the roles it is important for cell adhesion embryonic development, tumor, metastasis and morphogenesis. The next important adhesion molecule is called as integrins. Integrins are also a transmembrane signaling molecule and it is very important for the cell division as well as cell growth. And what are the two subunits present for the integrin? Here it is called as alpha and beta subunits which is present for the integrin. So from here you can see alpha subunit as well as beta subunit. From this figure also you can see alpha subunit and beta subunit. And two type of signaling is present inside out signaling as well as outside in, in signaling. That is from the name it is understood that outside something that is coming from inside towards outside. Such signaling is called as inside out signaling and outside in signaling means something that is coming from outside towards in. It is called as outside in signaling so when a protein example fibronectin reaches to any subunit you say there are two different subunits this is one subunit this is another subunit so whatever protein it may be for example i'm taking fibronectin and when this fibronectin is reaching to alpha or even to the beta any one of the subunit this will trigger into another development of separation of these two subunits so from this figure it is understood that you can see that this is alpha subunit beta subunit now a protein molecule is actually coming and binding towards that of the alpha subunit and this creates a separation between the two alpha alpha and beta about 70 armstrong so this uh, um, uh, how much it has been separated is important to learn it is 70 armstrong integrins are very much important for the blood clotting fibrin network formation as well as platelet creation is important so this figure is also suggesting how this uh, 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 molecules have been working together you have alpha subunit beta subunit some of the protein molecule uh, is coming or reaching on to the uh, first one of the subunit and then it has been separated together now what are the roles attachment of the cell to ecm extracellular molecule ecm means extracellular molecule signal transduction leukocyte extravasation cell migration and it is very important in the roles of cell cycle so this figure is also suggesting the same thing of how this protein molecules have been get attached. Next one is selectin. It's another uh, cell adhesion molecule. This is a calcium dependent glycoprotein and this is a single chain transmembrane glycoprotein. And this uh, selectin is involving some of the important components like N-terminal, calcium dependent lecithin, domain, EGF-like domain, consensus repeat, intracellular cytoplasmic tail is 
been seen. So in this figure it is understood. This is the first part called as lecithin domain, EGF like domain, and consensus repeat domains can be seen here. And this is the end where it is called a cytoplasmic tail, as well as this is a transmembrane domain. Uh, what are the important thing ligand to which it binds are carbohydrate and roles are lymphocyte homing inflammation process and leukocyte migration are some of the important process here the fourth category of the cell addition molecule have been called as immunoglobulin superfamily IgSF and superfamily of cell surface and soluble protein Ig domain formed by disulfide bridges or the disulfide bones this is including ICAM1 ICAM2 ICAM3 3 we can now what are the roles of immunoglobulin superfamily IGSF they are cell signaling important leukocyte extravasation and immune system functioning is very important in the case of immunoglobulin superfamily the next category of discussion is with the help of the with a thing which is called as gap junction so what is gap junction Gap junction is something that is seen in the animal cell but in the case of plant cell it is called as plasmodus mater the connection between the two different cells. So this is actually a cells that have channel on its cell membrane. Already the cells whatever cells it may be they are actually having a channel. There is a channel which could be seen on the cell membrane and when this channel are getting into arrangement or alignment with each other and this create a connection whenever there is a channel as you know that every cells are having some of the channel and when this channel are actually creating a connection between the two cells and this forms alignment of the two channels and lead to a connection between the two cells the channel can be made up of is made up of the protein called as connexin the protein name is called as connexin so the channel which is already present in the uh, cell which is made up of the protein called as connexin in animals as well as vertebrate and this connexon what is a connexon structure connexon structure means when six of the connexin forms a flower shaped tunnel called as connexon so from this figure it is clear that all these connections which is forming a six of the connexin forms a flower shaped tunnel and this structure is called as the connexon structure so here it is denoting how it is closed and open and if it is closed there is no holes or something that has been located inside that flower pattern structure or tunnel formation won't be present if it is open then you can see a hole in, uh, in the center of this particular flower shaped tunnel when both the connection structures are connected with each other forms a tunnel and cytoplasmic streaming will be present so here uh, when the two molecules have been uh, connected with each other they form a cytoplasmic streaming which could be seen connection open structure during cytoplasmic streaming and closed structure and no connection would be present here in the uh, uh, closed structure we cannot see any connection but if the connection structure is open you get a hole and now the connection between the cytoplasm will be present cytoplasmic streaming will also be taking place in the case of invertebrates this connection is made up of inaxine protein inaxine protein so this is again gap junction you can see that uh, these connexone structure which has been opened and then connected each together and cytoplasmic streaming will be taking place the same connexone structure has been denoted over this case also next one is the last section of discussion which is called as extracellular matrix what is extracellular matrix the word it is understood something that is external to the cell is called as extracellular matrix it is made up of bunch of proteins, fibers, glycoproteins, like bunch like structure. It's amazing like different color pattern. You could see this extracellular matrix. They are like bunch. It's like in a bunch of proteins, fibers, glycoproteins, everything which is structurally supporting the cells as well as the tissues. And it is very much important for the cell communication, cell growth, cell function, repairing the damaged tissue. For every functioning, this extracellular matrix is very important which is playing a very critical role in the case of the in our body abnormal changes in extracellular matrix lead to the disease like cancer so if if the working of the extracellular matrix is not proper it is really it is going to lead some of the certain diseases the major diseases is like cancer next this is what you see here uh, in the case of extracellular matrix that is something that is seen external to the cell is called as extracellular matrix 
now from out of the protein we have the most common uh, extracellular uh, matrix which is called as collagen which is a common protein in the mammals 30 percent of the proteins in the mammal is collagen collagen protein found to make up extracellular matrix so the collagen is one of the uh, 30 percent which could be seen in the mammals uh, called as collagen and this is making up of the extracellular matrix if if there is an human genetic disorder that is affecting collagen such as Ehlers Danlos syndrome result in fragile tissues that stretch and tear too easily. So this may lead to a disease also if it is affected with the help with the collagen. Now, extracellular matrix is directly connected to the cells. So uh, this extracellular matrix is always directly connected to the cell. Integrins are connector which are embedded in the plasma cells. So from this figure it is understood that is extracellular matrix where you can see a integrin structure which could be seen embedded or which can be seen on the plasma membrane. Now what is fibronectin? So here you see a fibronectin and this fibronectin is bridges between integrins and other extracellular matrix. Whatever extracellular matrix which is found outside as well as the integrin there is a uh, what you say there is a connection or the bridges which could be forming from the integrin to that of the external material and that is called as fibronectin. Integrins are linked to the cytoskeleton internally. So this to this cytoskeleton so everything that has been stiffly they have been managed to stay or together that is this integrin got a good connection with that of the fibronectin to the outside and towards the inside of the cytoskeleton is very important. Integrins anchor the cell to the extracellular matrix. In addition helps it sends environment blood clotting provides another example of communication between the cells. So from this it is understood that there is a very good uh, cell communication that could be seen in the extra uh, cellular uh, connections which could be mostly seen or extracellular matrix and uh, these are the three topics which I, am, I have to take and I am concluding my session. Thank you and have a nice day ahead.